Assassin's Creed, you play an assassin, as the title implies. His name's Altair, and you're sent on a mission to hunt down and find nine key guys who are responsible for the Third Crusade. So it's a historic setting, and the, you'll be able to explore three huge cities, Jerusalem, Damascus, Acre, and all the kingdom in between. Um, and basically, as you find these guys, you realize that they're connected in a weird way, and there's something else going on beyond your mission to end the Third Crusade. Mm. You can walk everywhere if that's your preferred form of transportation, but it's not recommended because the Koli Land is enormous, and actually the size of the cities right now are 15, larger, 15 times larger than what we showed at E3, plus there's this huge, huge kingdom in between, and for that you probably want to take your horse. Um, enjoy the scenery, um, maybe get into a couple fights, or maybe avoid them, um, but yeah, you can do all kinds of cool things on horseback, so obviously riding the horse, but um, you can also get on top and jump and do some like acrobatics. You can also take out your sword and be the, you know, the human lawnmower. <laughs> Um, one of our main focuses with Assassin's Creed is really to be the next-gen franchise. We've seen so far a lot of you know cool games coming out for the next-gen systems, but not that, not really any games that have been next-gen only from the start with features made for next-gen. And that's really what we tried to do: is think, okay, what are the experiences? What's the new type of gameplay that we can deliver that was just never possible before? So one of them is crowd gameplay. And what we've been working on for the past year is getting upwards of 150 different NPCs with their own AI on screen at once. Now, you know, that's maybe cool like to see visually, but there also has to be gameplay involved in that. So they're not just window dressing, they're not just like bushes or trees, they actually have impact on your actions. And we've been talking about this in terms of social stealth. And those are the consequences. So if you do things that are out of the ordinary, um, especially towards the end of the game when people kind of know that there's been an assassin around and he's been in the city, um, the crowd is probably going to notice, hey, you're running up the wall, or you know, a guard is going to notice that and go, that's the assassin, he's there. Um, so how does this tie into gameplay? That's really what measures your actions and has the difference between the more stealthy side when you're doing the approach, and then the whole fast-paced like action when you're being chased. And that's where the free running comes into play. Because once you've been seen, you're going to want to escape, get out of there really quickly, use your agility and your abilities basically based on free running, to like get away faster than the guards, get to a place where they can't reach you, break the line of sight, and then hide so that they can't figure out what happened to you. Well, there's, uh, we're going to be showing some of the interface elements at E3. Actually, uh, what we're showing now is, a, is gameplay footage, but it's a tease. It's admittedly a tease on the stuff that's coming up. Um, and at E3, you're going to get to see how the interface works. It ties into some of the stuff that we're not communicating on. but. Um, if we didn't have an interface, I think the depth of what's going on might have been lost. And we want to make sure one of the big things that uh, we want to, it's important to us, is not only to please the hardcore gamers by coming up with new gameplay, but also make sure that like people who don't play games every day can get into it and appreciate it. And for those people, some more clues about what's going on and reminders about your mission, stuff like that is pretty important. So there is going to be an interface. Um, so we worked with a historian to create all of these cities based on, first at the beginning of the project, uh, historians did all the research, gathered all of the references, what, are the real, uh, what was the real layout of the city at the time, um, what are the landmarks that existed at the time, what stuff was changed after and it looks a little bit different than it did, you know, does now back then. And we took all that stuff and we recreated it as it actually exists. And then afterwards, once the script was written, we actually sent the script and gameplay footage um, to historians. One guy who worked on Kingdom of Heaven with Ridley Scott and another guy who's a professor at Oxford, an expert in the Third Crusade. And we asked them to comment to even tune that even more. And they were just blown away. They're like, oh my god, you know, I've been to Damascus and I've been to Jerusalem. And not only did you get, you know, such and such a souk exactly like it existed, but you even got the architecture, like the metal that was there pre-Ottoman. So he was like totally freaking out. But what that means from a gamer, you know, if you don't care about history or, you know, whatever, it just means that you're going to get like a different experience. You're going to see like really different landmarks and it's recognizable. On top of that, we're playing with some modern glitches, some filters, like the same kind of treatment that Ridley Scott often uses in Black Hawk Down. So um, each city has its own mood and filter and treatment too. Catch an all-new X-Play, weeknights at 8, only on G4.